Today, no matter where you are gathered, or how many you're gathered with, you are still His church. You are still His church. God's love hasn't changed. It is unending. It is infinite. It is deep. And believe when I say His love has power today. Power to free you, heal you, and to fill you. And restore you. God's mercy hasn't changed. He keeps no record of wrong. And His mercy is new every morning. The cross hasn't changed. It's still there for you and for me, no matter who you are or what you've done. This is what we need to be reminded of today. That wherever two or more are gathered in His name, Jesus is standing in our midst. This means the church hasn't changed. The church isn't a building. It is you and I together, with the Spirit of God living in us, living through us. So today, as we come together, as we worship, let us be reminded that we are still His church. God is here with us right now. And no matter what your past looks like or how scary your future may be, you can trust God. You can trust God. And because He is here with us, we have everything we need today. We are still His church. We are still His church. We are still His church. Good morning, uh, Pastor Felder, if you can remove that uh, banner. Good morning, I am Pastor White. Welcome to Destiny Community Church, and we are excited that we are still yet the church. We started out the year um, uh, last year uh, bringing notice that we are the church. We are the church, and guess what? <laughs> We're still the church. And so regardless of where you are in your life and where you're going, when, what you may be going through, circumstances, situation, highs or lows, you are still God's church. And so he's promised that where there's two or three gathered in his name, he would be in the midst. So here it is in this 21st century that he allowed us to come together through cy cyberspace. So I'm grateful uh, that you are with us. And we got two, at least two already covered, I know. Um, and so we're going to move forward knowing that God is with us. I thank God that his hands is not that small, that he can't reach across the world, uh, that his arms uh, are, are not that short, that he can't reach and hug the whole world today. And his voice is not just uh, inclusive to himself, but he will speak to the whole world today. Those of you that are around the world that's tuned in to the Destiny uh, platforms from wherever you're coming from, from all seven platforms or eight, we welcome you. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We don't have uh, CJ today, but he left some uh, some notes for us, some music for us uh, to get us uh, ushered farther into the presence of God. God promises that he inhabits, I mean, he lives, he dwells in the presence of him. And so we're going to bring uh, what CJ has uh, brought for us. And then I'll come back, give a quick announcements and the scripture reading. Also, uh, give us the opportunity to worship by giving. So go ahead and share and like and, um, 
invite those uh, to catch us on this early point of the worship experience. Got a word. Won't be as long as last week, I promise. Um, but we're supposed to have been in Alabama, but you see that um, those things have changed. I am not Pastor Edwards, who was supposed to be preaching this morning. I am Pastor White of the Destiny Church, and so we're going to come back and uh, give you what God has for us today. I'm excited about it, and you should do too. I promise, I promise you're going to be excited about it. All right, so if you could uh, now gather yourselves to worship uh, with CJ as Pastor Felder would bring him up now. My friends may press me down And turn my glad to sad God didn't say that my life would be Easy always So when you knock me down I am never gonna ever frown I'll keep my hands in the master's hands Cause one day this will all come to an end And I'm gonna rise, rise, rise above it all I'm gonna rise, rise Rise above it all. I'm gonna take wings and fly away. Rise above it all. This world is so full of evil, and the enemy is all around. Satan has tried, he's tried so very hard, he's tried to hold, he's tried to hold me down, but I've got something within me, yes I do, that helps me make it through the rain, and when it gets rough, and when it gets I won't worry at all I'm gonna rise, rise, rise above it all I'm gonna rise, yeah, 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 yeah Rise above it all One of these old mornings, it won't be long I'm gonna rise above it all Y'all miss me singing down here. Oh, don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you worry about me. Yeah. I'm going to a place where there'll be no more heartache. Gonna shout hallelujah. Gonna praise God's holy name and I'll rise. Yes, I'll rise. Rise above it all. I'm gonna rise, yeah, I'll rise, I'll rise above it all. One of these old mornings, it won't be long, I'm gonna rise above it all. I'm gonna take wings and fly away to heaven and rise above it all. Amen. We pray that God will uh, allow us to rise above all of the circumstances, situations that we face and dealing with. Uh, he will do it. 
He will give us wings as eagles, the scripture tells us. And so we thank God for that encouragement. As we move farther into the worship experience, my um, team is telling me that uh, we're coming over a little choppy. Um, I apologize for that. I think I know the system problems, and uh, I'm going to have to work on that on another day. And if uh, my administrators, uh, Tawana, Pam, uh, Yvonne, uh, if y'all can send a note that you are, if you're receiving um, uh, the broadcast uh, choppy, uh, would you put that in the, in the chat for, so that the production team can see um, that it's not just us, but it's the audience. So we're doing the best we can. We just uh, uh, moved our little studio setting with a week ago, and we still got things uh, to get adjusted here. So uh, we pray that God will allow us to get um, done what he has called us to do, the assignment that he's called us to, to do on today's for uh, your good and your benefit. Now let us worship God by our uh, giving. If you will, there's four ways that you can give today to uh, help us, as you can see, help us uh, uh, deal with certain uh, system problems and uh, get new systems in as time changes. I mean, like every six months, something new comes in and the, what you were using is now obsolete <laughs> to a degree. So um, to get the word out around the world as God has allowed us to do and, and chosen us to do, that includes you as a partner um, with this ministry. We are, um, can't, we really purpose ourselves on intentionally teaching the word of God. It shouldn't be a ministry in itself. But since a lot of it is not in a lot of parts of the world, uh, we have made this the purpose of our uh, ministry is teaching God's word uh, in an expository manner. And so you are a part of what God is doing um, by you uh, supporting the church ministry. So in those five ways, four ways that you can give to us and um, we would be praying that God bless your household, your children and all. Uh, that you stand in the need of by giving back to him at least 10%. Let me say this uh, about tithe. Tithe was commenced. Um, this is a quick little lesson. Time was tithe was commenced by Abraham and um, back in the Old Testament. That's when it first started. And then it was commanded in the law by Moses. Then it was uh, commended by Jesus um, dealing with the Pharisees out of all the other st stuff in the law they wasn't keeping they kept the tithe they were doing the tithe and Jesus commended them um, so well, who are we to cancel so if it's been uh, commissioned com commissioned and commissioned and commanded and then um, um, uh, this a note for me okay thank you Latoya I thought this was uh, one of the other notes and so um, if it's been commissioned, uh, commanded, and commended by Jesus, who are we to cancel? Tithing is a good place um, to, to start, but a bad place to stop, meaning that many of us give beyond, beyond the tithe uh, and that we give abundantly as taught in our New Testament. So with that said, I want to pray then I'm going to read scripture for you today, and then um, CJ is going to come back, and we're going to give you the word that God has for us on today. So if you have been following us, you know that we are in Exodus, Exodus. And so today we're going to um, pick up at Exodus 23 and 25, um, chapter 2, chapter 2, 23 through 25. Um, during that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out in their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning. I don't know if you have a paperback Bible, go ahead and underline that. He heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant with Abraham. With Isaac, and you might want to go ahead and underline, underscore, remember too. Because I don't know about you, but I need him to remember, <laughs> remember little old me. So he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And so God 
Here's the other thing you want to underscore. Looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. This is God's word for God's people on today. And uh, we're going to pray for God to bless your giving. And then I'll come back and give you what God's word is for us on today. Lord, we thank you now for those who you have connected across the world to be able to carry out your gospel in these last and evil days. We pray, God, that you would uh, anoint their giving, anointing meaning that you would provide special divine power to their giving that it will spill over into their household. Um, that you will supply their very needs because they are sacrificial given unto you. Bless as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll be right back after CJ has sung uh, this particular song. Say thank you. I wanna say thank you. Oh, I wanna say thank you for being so good to me. You've been there for me even when I wasn't right. You came into my life. Now I'm walking in the light You gave me a new heart You gave me a new start That's why I praise your name Lord, you have been so good to me Thank you I want to say thank you I want to say thank you For being so good for me, even when I wasn't right, you came into my life, now I'm walking in the light, you came into my heart, you gave me a new start, that's why I praise your name, Lord you have been so good to me, thank you, I want to say thank you, oh, I want Say thank you for being so good to me. I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Jesus. I really need you, Jesus. Yes, I really need you, Jesus. I say yeah, 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 yeah. I wanna say thank you. I wanna say thank you. Oh, oh, I wanna say thank you for being so good to me. All right. Amen. Whew. It's one of these mornings. Y'all praying with me? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this must going to be a good word. All right. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for 
being attentive to our needs, that you saw fit that we would live another day, that you would breathe in us life, that we can hear your word. I thank you personally as uh, under shepherd uh, that you would uh, allow those senses to be censored for you to speak to us. The censors of our minds, the senses of our hearts, the desire to hear from you. So we thank you, O oh God, that you've given uh, that urge to these your people. And so now, God, I ask that you would stand in my body and think with my mind and touch my wretched lips of clay, that the words you shall speak give us direction and deliverance. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. God's word for us today as we um, journey through the series that we have um, coined my Red Sea Journey to deliverance, my Red Sea journey to deliverance. Everyone is going to have a Red Sea moment this this year, this new year. Uh, I ain't gonna make no no other predictions uh, because if you're going to cross any level of life that you're um, praying for, the things you want, the blessings of deliverances that you will want. There is going to be a Red Sea moment that you have to have the faith and the trust to get to and to cross all the way through the other side. So God has given us up through probably Easter to discuss the character and the personality and the dualities of one of our uh, God's greatest men. And that is Moses. So we will... Uh, uh, search out him as a character as he grows from a baby all the way through crossing the Red Sea into the promised land. For today and the next coming weeks, um, we're going to have the same sermon topic, I believe. Um, and this sermon topic is no more beating around the bush. No more beating around the bush. When we uh, last left Moses, we had um, just been, he had just been rescued uh, from the Nile River from a basket made of reeds. A baby. He was an adopted by Pharaoh's household. He spends the next 40 years growing up as an Egyptian royalty. Y'all remember that? Uh, he was adopted as the son of Pharaoh's daughter and educated, if you will, at the University of Egypt. Yeah, we, he wore the finest of clothes and, and he had servants at his beckoning call. The lady um, that helped raise him happened to be his own mother who taught him that he was really not that he was an Israelite and not really an Egyptian. One day, he sees an Egyptian uh, beating up on an Israelite brother. Now that he knows who he really is, he, re he knows he's really an Israelite because his mother raised him and whispered in his ear all the time, who he really was, but we're acting like we're this, but you're really this. And so it's in him now. He is an Israelite. So he sees one of his Israelite brothers who are in, who is in slavery being beaten by an Egyptian shoulder, shoulder. So his emotions grows up in him and he, he tried, um, uh, uh, to wrestle the man off, but ends up killing the Egyptian and in him killing him. Then he tries to cover up the deed. Um, the, the, the body was discovered, and Moses had to be on the run. Uh, he, he goes out into the middle of the desert, a place called uh, Median. He becomes a shepherd. If y'all allow me just a few moments to paint this picture of where we are now from the baby to where we are right now. He becomes a shepherd, um, marries a woman, um, has a family, goes from the penthouse uh, to the outhouse. He seems um, resigned that this is where uh, he wants, where he wants to be for the rest of his life. 
He's resigning there. He has resigned and retired. That this is where I want to be for the rest of my life. In the midst of a desert behind some mountains. He spends the next 40 years of his life on the backside of the desert in total obscurity. Exodus here tells us virtually nothing about the 40 years of his life. In fact, the, 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 and I looked and I looked and I researched as much as I possibly could uh, that the entire 40 year period only takes up 12 verses in the book of Exodus only. May it be that your delay in life as it is him wandering in the desert, maybe, maybe you have found yourself um, in a desert experience. And maybe um, oftentimes uh, when we find ourselves in a desert or behind a mountain or in the wilderness, it could be that God is developing you. Your delay may be for the development and not for punishment. Are you hearing me? Whatever it is that you're doing during your desert time, make sure that you are learning. Make sure that you are have a keen ear for what God is developing you for in life that you may not be able to see in your destiny. Your uh, desert experience may not be punishment. It just may be your development. Are y'all hearing me? Moses had been in a palace, uh, palace royalty. And so for 40 years now, uh, he's no longer in that comfortable position. He's, he's dealing with sun, the sun, the, he's dealing with dryness. He's dealing, uh, while he's in the desert, he's herding his, uh, father-in-law's sheep. Perhaps it is that God was developing him to prepare him for uh, handling some hard-headed sheep in the people of Israel. It's one thing to rule them in royalty because when you tell them to do something, they got to do it. <laughs> if they don't do it, you kill them. But here it is when he becomes the leader of God's people, he can't just kill them. He has to deal with the hard-headedness and the short-sightedness. The, and so here it is then, he has to deal with sheep. God has him with Jethro, his father-in-law, developing him, getting him ready. I know you're asking, what does this have to do with a burning bush? I just stay right there. We're coming. Here, right now, in this moment, and you may have, be in this moment as well, you don't hear a word from God. There, there is in the text, Moses does not hear from God for 40 years. Lord, help us. It, it is in that desert that God that rescued Moses as a baby shows back up at the age of 80-year-old man. And through a bush that begins to burn but would not con be consumed. It thought, it taught uh, Moses three important lessons that we would never, should never, and would never forget. He never forgot, and I pray that we won't forget the lessons that we will share on today. There's three lessons, but I'm only going to share one today for the uh, sake of time. And I'm, again, I'm sure you're asking what does a burning bush or a red sea or a man named Moses have to do with me this morning? Well, I'm glad you asked me to ask you uh, what it is that it has to do with you. And here it is. You will see throughout this series, we all have Red Sea moments. We all come face to face at times with burning bushes. Moses is all of us, y'all. Moses is you. Moses is me. And the God of Moses is still alive today. The God of Moses is your God. The, the, the God of Moses is, is my God. He wants to move in your life the same way he moved in Moses' life. 
He, he wants to move. God wants to move in your life. That's why he has us here. Um, to, to, to say this is not just an Old Testament parable or story uh, to be told or to be taught or to be preached. He still wants the same God that gave birth to Moses for a purpose, that gave birth to you for a purpose, want to move, wants to move through you as he did Moses. You are going to learn the first of three lessons today that will teach you don't ever be around the bush that's calling your name, that's drawing you, that's pulling you into an area, into a purpose, into a destiny that God has set up just for you. I'm telling you right now, uh, listen for the Spirit to call and direct you. Listen attentively. We talked about it on Thursday during Bible study, how we have to live this life attentively listening for God, attentively looking for the move of God in your life. If you feel like today you are living on the backside of the desert and nobody knows about your life, no, no, nobody uh, cares about your life, even God has forgotten, you feel this way, please take these three lessons to heart. So the first lesson, if you will, is to remember God's confirms his promise. Remember God confirms his promises. He has a promise to fulfill for you. We'll talk about what those promises possibly is. I'm just going to uh, give you a, just a smidget of what the promises that he has for you. So first, the third chapter of Exodus begins, and uh, innocently enough, in chapter 3, verse 1, it reads like this. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. Let's keep in mind, God not only said one word, he didn't say anything to Moses. Got that right? You understood that? He still hadn't said anything to Moses or anyone else in 40 years. I don't know if I didn't, I don't know what in the world I would do if I didn't hear from God in 40 years. But if you're not hearing from God right now in your life, it hadn't been for 40 years. As a matter of fact, he's speaking uh, now to you and every time you tune in he's speaking to you not me uh, it's God's word that's why we are serious about making sure you get God's word so no one not even Moses for 40 years uh, not they didn't hear anything they didn't hear a peep uh, not a whisper not a word for 14,600 days all Moses had known was sand sheep and silence, sand, sheep, and silence. Listen, my friends, just because God doesn't say anything doesn't mean that God hasn't said anything. Are y'all hear me? Nor does it mean he no longer has anything to say. Hey, you're going to be on this journey this year. Into the year 2023, it's going to be some periods of time. You're not going to hear a word from him. You're not going to be able to feel him or trace him. Um, and you're going to wonder, what's going on? Has he forgotten about me? Watch the story. The story of Moses doesn't actually begin with Moses. Watch this. Um, the story of Moses actually begins about 600 years earlier. So this 40 years of silence is nothing compared to to 600 years earlier come here lean in God has been working on your story for years before you were even here through your great your grandparents your great grandparents your great 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 grandparents God has been working on your story are y'all hearing me that's exciting right there all by itself to know um, that he ain't just start 
working on my story. He, he didn't just, um, um, just pop up on the scene to work on my story. He was working up my story a long time ago before I was born. Here it is. He was working on Moses' story early with a man named Abraham. Are y'all still here with me? Y'all praying with me here? We need to leave uh, Exodus so I can prove my point. Let's go away from Exodus for a moment and go to the book of Acts. To, to, to one of the finest deacons you'll ever meet. And that was uh, chosen in the early church, uh, a man by the name of Stephen. He was giving a speech to the Jewish Supreme Court. He was recounting the history of Israel. Telling this story, he tells us there was more to Moses than his birth. Acts chapter 7, verse 17 through 20. Uh, can I prove my point in the text? There it is. Uh, As the time drew near for God to fulfill his promise to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt had greatly increased. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. He dealt uh, treacherously with our people and oppressed our ancestors by forcing them to throw out their newborn babies so that they would die. At that time, Moses was born, and he was no ordinary child. Now, Stephen here talks about a promise. He's letting these people know in the book of Acts about a promise that God had made to Abraham and how Moses is tied to that promise. Are y'all hearing me? Can I pause uh, to suggest um, that all you have may be, may be tied to you? Can I suggest that there are others that's tied to your promise? God has made promises to your grandmama, to your mama, your granddaddy and them, to your auntie and them, great auntie and great great auntie that has prayed for uh, their legacy, prayed for uh, their generation. You, perhaps this morning, your story didn't just start. You are connected and tied to some others' promises. Are y'all hearing me? I, I, uh, I uh, had the privilege of uh, of um, uh, dedicating Toya's uh, little child there in Sharon, South Carolina. She brought her down from New York um, and had her dedicated to the Lord on their um, uh, ancestry prop property. And even during that time, we didn't take oil uh, to put on her head. That, that's tradition. We, t we took um, sand from the property and put on her feet so that those who had been praying for her for generations and generations, she is connected to their promises. Now, y'all may not think that's, that's, that's powerful, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it there. Let me, just hold on a second. I'm going to bring it sitting in your lap. I'm trying to get it to your lap. I'm coming down your street now. God's promise to someone else who prayed for you had you on their minds. I thank God uh, for my mother. I thank God for my father. I thank God for my grandmother, one who prayed for me when I would leave my bedroom. She would be in the other room while I'm decked out and ready to go to the club. She would be, couldn't move, wouldn't move, but she would move her mouth praying for me as I would be tiptoeing out of the house in the middle of the night. And guess what? When I returned back to the house, she would was still praying for me. I it ain't it ain't too much about who you are. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to sit in your lap. It ain't about your degree. It ain't about what you have. It ain't about all that you think you have gained. We are connected to others' promise. I'm glad somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind. Here's the thing, my friends. Moses spent 40 years. Every blessing isn't about you. Every blessing that you want is not all about you. Every blessing that you get is not about you. Every miracle that you experience is not about you and I. Every um, uh, breakthrough that you get is not about you. It's about somebody else to, that perhaps has prayed for them. Now here's the, here's the thing. Watch this. 
Now that others have prayed for you and you got breakthroughs because of them, your breakthrough now is about somebody else that's coming along. You, you, y'all not hear me. God performing a miracle in your life um, for those who's coming along after you now. Your, your children, your your grandchildren, your nieces and your nephews and uh, those, uh, so the blessing that you may be re- wanting or receive may not be all about you. Your miracle in your life may not even be about you. It may be about them or it may be about them in the past. Hallelujah. So, um, let's get off our soapbox and stop thinking that everything is about us or you are brought out to bring somebody else out. Some of our disrespectful children, uh, some of our dishonorable children, don't even realize the only reason they are breathing right now, the only reason they, they, they are eating right now is because you prayed for them or praying for them. You may be the very cause of why they are still living. Even though they may not give you the respect, give you dishonor, or give you dishonor, don't honor you, uh, it may be just to the fact um, uh, they don't realize just yet how much you mean to them. Continue to pray for them eventually. God will bring them around. What promise could Deacon Stephan here possibly be referring to? Again, centuries before Moses was born, he had told Abraham that his descendants from the nation of Israel would not only be afflicted, he not only told them they would be persecuted, but they would serve slave as slaves for 40 years. I'm not making it up. Now, this is important to know because God keeps his promises. Let's look at Genesis 15. I want to show you the promise. Uh, So, you know, I'm not making this up. Look at God here in the first book of the Bible. Before there was ever a Moses thought about, before his mama and daddy even thought about him. Uh, Chapter 15, verse 12 to 13 says, as the sun was setting, setting, uh, Abraham fell into a deep sleep, a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in a country, not their own, and that they will be enslaved, and they will be mistreated there. Now, God has a perfect record when it comes to his predictions. His predictions always comes through. The Israelites did move to Egypt. They were total strangers. They were enslaved. They were mistreated. Along with the prediction, God made a promises, a promise uh, again in Genesis 15 verse 14 there. He says, but... <laughs> Let the church say, but go ahead and put that in the comment section, if you will. So Facebook and all our other platforms know that we're alive over here. It says, verse 14 says, but, <laughs> but, 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 God help me right on through here. But I will punish the nation that serves as slaves. They serve as slaves. And afterwards, they will come out. Here it is. With great possessions. Now listen, here it is again. This is before Moses was ever thought of. This was before Moses was in his mother's womb. Back in the book of Genesis. God promised that they would be liberated. Just as God's uh, prediction always comes true. God's promises are always kept. Are you hearing me now? What, what, what we uh, need to grab from this is that, that there is nothing that sneaks up on God. Oh, God, y- y- your situation, um, your circumstances, your issues, your troubles, your problems, it just didn't sneak up on God. God already knew what you were going to go through before you went through it. He already knew how you would feel in the midst of it. He knew that you were ready to throw in the towel, but he had promises to your answer sisters to bring you through ancestors to bring you through to break you through and he promised them that 
that you will come through what you're coming through because you got somebody tied to you. I will give God praise right along through there that everything about this life and about everything about my problems, everything about my issues and troubles in life is not all about me, but it's about them and those who are tied to me. Hallelujah. Now the Israelites had given up on God a long time ago. So I come to tell you today to encourage you one for one, don't give up on him. Don't, don't, don't forget about him. Stay right there. You may not be able to feel him. You may not be able to track him or trace him right now or target him, but don't give up on him. The Bible says in verse 23, uh, chapter 2, verse 23 to 25, during that long period of time, it says, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and they cried uh, for help. Uh, I, can I hear somebody crying? Go ahead and put that in the comment section. I think I'll pause right there and give you time to go ahead and, and just say, I'm crying out to you, Lord. I'm crying out. I'm crying out. I'm crying out. I'm crying out. You want to encourage somebody else uh, to cry out uh, across the world. Just cry out. Keep crying out. Don't stop crying out. Their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. I don't care who else hears you. I don't care who do not hear you. I just need God to hear my cry. God heard the groaning. That's what the text says. And he remembered his covenant with, with Abraham. Let me back up. Did I tell you earlier to underscore God heard that groaning? And then he says, watch this, underscore this. He remembered his covenant. He remembered his promise uh, with your ancestors, uh, he, he remembered his promise with grandmama, with big mama. Uh, he remembered the promise with Abraham, with Isaac and Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Here it is. When he's concerned, when it is that I can't trace him. I don't feel his direction. I can't track him. I can't target him. I just need five more minutes and I'm done. He will still yet hears you. He not only hears you where you are, even if you're in the hospital bed listening to me right now, he not only hears your cry, he sees you where you are. No, I can't feel him. I can't trace him. I can't target him. I can't track him. But he still sees me. Hallelujah. He, he still um, hears me. God has not gone to sleep at the wheel, my friends. God has not turned his back on his people. He has not turned his back on you. Nor has he turned his back on your prayers. Even though... We may turn our backs on him. He has not turned his back on us, and he's yet still been faithful. Has he been faithful to anybody? If he's been faithful to you, just go ahead and be another testimony, if you will, to interact with me and just put in the text, he's been faithful. Because some, somebody um, in Africa, somebody in Germany, somebody in Jamaica, somebody in the Bahamas, somebody in the United States, um, don't think that God uh, has been faithful to anybody. So somebody needs to know that God uh, is still faithful. You want to encourage him uh, to get back up and, and, and face the circumstances because God has been faithful. God has not forgotten. God about his promise when you make a promise or when I make a promise we sometimes fail to keep that promise but God does not forget and he does not fail well preacher you done talked about the promise from Genesis to to Abraham but what about the promises to me in this New Testament Dispensation, dispensation period. What about right now? What about a promise for me? Well, here it is. I got a few promises uh, just to share with you real quick, and I'm closing. But before I do that, I do need to remind you again that God's promises may 
uh, will never fail. Your promise, my promises um, may fail because of circumstances or because of us not being disciplined, but the earth may quit turning. God's promise will still, uh, uh, still prevail. The sun may quit shining. Um, the moon may quit glowing. The rivers may quit flowing. The wind may quit blowing. The waves may quit crashing. And the clouds may quit raining. But God will never fail and to keep his promise. Though Moses didn't know when he was born. <clears throat> he didn't know it when he was born. And he thought his parents didn't know when they conceived him. Uh, that the Israelites didn't know it when they saw him. But this man named Moses is to remind us this morning that God confirms his, his promises. He wants to confirm just a little bit of his promises with you today. If you will, I've made up in my mind that even when I can't feel him and when I can't trace him and when I can't track him, I'm going to stand on his promises. Can I encourage you with just a smidget of the promises that he has for you in this New Testament time? Psalms 27, 24, to promises, I will take hold of your hand to keep you from falling. <clears throat> Hebrews 13, verse 20 through 21, I will provide every good thing you need to do my will. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my power will rest on you when you are weak. He promises in number 6, 24, I will bless your life and keep watch over you, not sometimes, but all times. He promises in Psalm 97, 10, I will shield your life and deliver you from the wicked one. And 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all your worries on me for I really do care about you his promise in 1 Corinthians 10 13 I will not let the tempted be you be tempted beyond what you may be able to endure he promises in Psalms 94 11 I will not withhold any good thing from those with an upright heart he promised in Psalms 146 I look after the foreigners and I will help the fatherless and the widows. Jeremiah 29 11. My plan for your future is filled with hope. Promise in Psalms 23 verse 2 I will give you rest in the green pastures and lead you to still waters. Proverbs 3 Trust in me and I will yeah I will guide you if you trust in me with all of your heart. Second in Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16 I will give you peace at all times in every situation promise in Psalm 91 15 call on me when you are in trouble and I will yeah rescue you Psalm 61 I am your shelter and a place of safety from your enemies Isaiah 64 if you wait on me I will do the work for you on your behalf. Psalm 23 verse 1. I am your shepherd. I will meet all of your needs. John 10 29. I will keep you safe because no one can snatch you out of my hand. Psalms 147. I will yeah, heal your broken heart and mend all of your wounds. 2 Corinthians 5 1. I will bless you in time when your body fails you have an internal home waiting for you and lastly I just tell you in Acts 12 20 or 2 20, 39 my promise for life is not only for you but it's for your people it's for your family yes the devil is a lie I am going to stand go ahead stand on his promises go ahead and tell the enemy and tell hell yeah that I'm standing
standing on the promises of God. Let your family know. Tell three people, I'm standing, I'm standing. I'm standing, I'm standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages, let his presence ring. Glory to the highest. I will shout and sing. Standing, now go ahead. Standing on the promises of God. God always will do what he said he'll do. That's why I'm standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear sail by the living word of God, I shall, I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God, I shall not fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. I don't know about you, but I feel like praising God for his promises. Thank you, Lord, for your promises from my great-grandmother. Thank you for the promises you kept from my grandmother. Thank you for the promises you kept with my mother. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you promised me what you're going to do for my children. I may not never see it, but I trust you that you will hold on to your promise. Hallelujah. No problems can cause him to break his problems. No issues can cause him to break his promise. No of your circumstances can cause him to break his promise. Satan can't break your promise. God's God's, God's word is his promise and it will never ever fail. Hallelujah. I thank God for his word that has been crushed to the earth but yet it still arises. God's promise is what you have to focus on when you're going around the bush. The bush will call us in the midst of our situation. The bush will call us when we seem like there is no more hope. The bush will call us when there seems that God has forgotten about us. The bush will call us. So don't beat around the bush. When the bush calls us, humble yourself and listen attentively. So all this week, if you will, uh, when we get to Thursday, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about attentively. When you are walking through this life and trouble comes the way to come, the attacks may come, listen attentively for the Spirit of God. Listen attentively for the bush that may be calling you, that may be drawing you. And when you can't hear from the bush, Keep your eyes on the bush. That thing that God has placed in your life that draws your attention that is yet a miracle. Has he ever healed your body? Has, has he ever raised you from the dead? You remember when you had that stroke, that heart attack, that sickness? That, that's, that's a burning bush. That you can always look to. And remember God's promise. That's, that's a burning bush, bush when you can't hear God. And the bush may not be speaking. But you can see it's not being consumed. Which is a miracle. Look in your life. And look at the miracle that God has. Already set fire. Until. The bush speaks. So the first lesson of the three that I want to leave with you in the coming weeks is to remember that God confirms his promises. I listed a smidget of his promises. There are over three, four hundred promises that I could have dug up. But you know that God's hand on your life is a promise from those who were before you and it's a breakthrough for those who are coming after you. You Listen, I tried to tell you the other week, 
that you were born for a purpose. Don't let Satan fool you. Don't let your circumstances fool you. Don't let the devil lie to you. You may not be where you want to be, but you still serve a purpose, God's purpose. You, it may not be to impress those you want to impress, but somebody, somebody is going to be impressed enough to want your God because you're tied to an old covenant promise to your relatives of old. You're tied as an auntie, an uncle, a daddy, a granddaddy, a papa. You are tied to those who come in after you. Hey, go ahead and put your shoulder, head up, shoulders back. Let's get through this thing. Let's get through this Red Sea. You got purpose in life. All right? God bless you. CJ is going to come and um, and give us another song, if possible, <laughs> we hope. And then after that, um, I'm going to try to come back and, and uh, get a benediction. I think I probably need to stay with the system right now. So let me do this. Let me pray for you and um, bid you a good week and um, allow the songs to pray play as we leave. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of those who are worshiping with us live. And then there are some that will come later on in the week, God, that will view this, this message from you. We pray, God, that it will reinvigorate um, souls that are downtrodden in despair, lost, we pray, O oh God, they'd be renewed by the promises that you've already made, that they will stand on the promises. And so, God, we pray now for each person that is um, with us through cyberspace. I pray personally, God, for their family. You have them in the middle. You have each individual that's listening to me right now in the middle of being tied to their old family generation. They are tied to the promises you made with them. They are tied to those who are coming after them. So God, be God in their lives this week. So there will be no mistake about it. That the God that we serve is still yet real. So God, I pray that you will strengthen those who are looking for prayer, um, today we pray for Roosevelt, Reverend Roosevelt Brooks. Pray for Six Tribals of uh, Eric Edwards and uh, Lady V, her, his publicist. Uh, we pray, oh God, for um, uh, the young man that was killed this week in Memphis, Tennessee. God, you be with his family. And those that are not heard of or not publicly uh, put out as certain murders have occurred. God, we know we're living in an evil day. And this evil does not have color. It does not have uh, uh, brown or green. No certain color. Just evil. So God, I pray that you protect us during this week with your angels. As we go through this mean, cruel world representing you. For it's in your name we pray. With the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. I love you. Hopefully hopefully everything went, <laughs> went, went, went out fine. If not, hang in here with us. We'll try to work out these kinks uh, in the coming weeks. So uh, God bless you. Have a great week. And um uh, would you consider also those who could be coming in late, consider giving, um, and we'll have those up as we are journey. God bless you, and we'll see you on Thursday at 7 o'clock. Thursday at 7 o'clock.
Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace. And Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are yeah Lord I worship you because Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah DC, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, my prayer. My provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace, Lord, I worship you because of who Lord, I worship you because of who you are. What an awesome word by a man of God. I pray that it bless you as you have blessed me today. This I'm calling for all unbelievers um, to know that in Romans 10 and 9, the word says that if we, um, and I'm paraphrasing right now until a pastor put that up, uh, but if we, if thou, that if thou should confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and should believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What an awesome word to give us for us as unbelievers. If you're an unbeliever and you want to be saved, I need you to repeat this sinner's prayer after me. 
Lord Jesus, for too long, I've kept you out of my life. I know that I'm a sinner and that I cannot save myself. No longer will I close the door when I hear you knocking. By faith, I gratefully receive your gift of salvation. I'm ready to trust you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to earth. I believe you are the son of God who died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead on the third day. Thank you for bearing my sins and giving me the gift of eternal life. I believe your words are true. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my savior. Amen. As we welcome you to the body of Christ, we are grateful that you chose to choose God to follow. We want you to continue your growth here at Destiny Church as we begin our Bible studies each Thursday night at 7 p.m. And also we come want you to come back and hear the word that presented by our very own Pastor White on Sunday's morning at 11. We thank you again, and we know that this gift of salvation is free to all, and we welcome you. We welcome you again into the body of Christ. The disciples, y'all, not that we perish. Oh, how can that lie asleep? Yeah. that everything obeys Jesus. All he had to say was, peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. In our homes, we need a Jesus. Can I get a witness to wave your hand tonight? If you need it, Father, we need it in our school, Jesus. We need it in our jobs. God, we need it in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever the Lord said, Tell somebody tonight, I don't care what the devil said, I don't care what the devil did, you're leaving with peace. Matter of fact, by the time you get back to your address, you want to walk in your house to find you for peace. God, I thank you for peace. You've been a good God. You've been a good God. Anybody know all he got to do is be peace. <laughs> I don't care what it looks like. You're going to have it. Matter of fact, you already got it. Can somebody wave your hand? Lift up your hand and thank God. You've been a good God. We thank you for peace. 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 Grab somebody by the hand. Uh. Tell me I need you to put your hand in the neighbor's hand. Squeeze the hand. Hey, can you do me a favor? I wish I could touch everybody, but can you look at us, neighbor? I want to let you know something. Tell them, first off, I love you. But say, neighbor, I don't care what you've been going through. Say, neighbor, whatever you've been going through getting ready to pull you out when i count to three i just want you to pull your neighbor and give god a ridiculous peace praise one two three pull your neighbor and say welcome to your season of peace whatever the lord says anybody grateful 
Somebody clap your hand, open up your mouth, and give God the best praise. 